Good morning, everybody. Talofa Lava. Buenos dias. Good morgen. Bom dia. Bonjour. It's great to have you with us today. Bienvenidos a todos. We welcome you to Ainsworth United Church of Christ and a special welcome to Brandon Nelson who just played that beautiful piece. Uh, you can unmute for a moment and cheer and say, hi, Brandon, welcome. Hi, Brandon, welcome. Hi, Brandon. Hey, Brandon. Hey, welcome. Thank you, Brandon. Welcome, Brandon. Hey, Brandon, welcome. Thanks for the music. <laughs> We are grateful that he is here on our new red piano. So we're grateful to Love and Salt and Light community for the piano and for Brandon for playing it today. Is that a new piano? Yes, it is. It's brand new. Well, it's a hand-me-down new piano. Okay. And it is uh, in better shape than our last, a little bit, It was. it's newer. Uh, it's, you know, not a lot better kind of quality, but but better shape because it is newer and hopefully won't break strings very easily and all that. Um, so we are grateful for that. And uh, I want to remind you today is Communion Sunday, so make sure you have your elements with you. Uh, I have to say I, a mess of apologies. I neglected to send out the order of worship and all that till this morning and then my computer is not things are held up with the the email i don't know what's going on so i'm glad you're all on and hope others will find their way on because it is the same link each week and i apologize for that um also a reminder that if you have prayer concerns we invite you to put them in the chat box um, to send them to Cecil or to myself. Uh, we would prefer you not send everything to everybody so that people like Janine don't have to have the computer reading them constantly to her. So we ask that you send them to either Cecil or to me. And with that in mind, I think we are ready to go further into worship and I invite you to breathe in deeply. Welcome, everyone. Uh, not only are we going to, uh, am I going to read the land acknowledgement, but I also would like to uh, wish everyone a happy Labor Day and remember all those who have labored before us and those who, who, who labor now and in the future to build our country to a, a better place for us to live. Land acknowledgement. We sit on the ancestral lands, land, homelands of the Multnomah, Kathlamet, Clackamas, Tualatin, Kapula, Molala, Banza of the Chinook, and many others who made their homeland homes along the Columbia River. We honor the members of over 400 tribal communities who live in the Portland metro area. We also want to acknowledge the labor of kidnapped and enslaved Africans and of Chinese workers and Latinx farm workers who have risked, no, risked so much to receive so little. They have all helped to build the wealth of this country. Please make take a moment to honor the people who continue to resist and survive despite the intentional and ongoing attempts to destroy them. Prayer of, conf of confession. Uh, I'll read the uh, light print and you all read the bold print. Rabbi, teacher Jesus, you taught thousands and yet were willing to learn from the least of these. We confess that we pretend to know when in truth we still wonder. Forgive our pretense that we may open ourselves to unexpected teachers to fresh ideas to one another and you. 
Vulnerable Christ, you who lived in generous love, we confess that we have closed ourselves off, that we have seen so much suffering, that we stop looking rather than see and respond to those in need. Forgive our neglect that we may care for one another and follow in the example you set for us. In your name we pray. Amen. now remember that God loves you. God receives you. God knows and forgives you. God gives us a new start every moment, every day. center ourselves for prayer, I invite you to breathe in deeply that healing Holy Spirit. Breathe out, giving up to God all your burdens, all your cares. Let us become aware of the God who is with us now who is always present, whose spirit stirs among us at all times. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day, for the opportunity to gather once again as your people, though scattered in many places we are united by your spirit. And so as your children, we cry to you, Lord, hear our prayers. For workers who make our lives so much better, for those who are in occupations that are hazardous, for those who are working so hard and compensated so little. We remember them, their labor, and unite with them 
in their cries and effort for justice. For those who are ill, those we've named, and those we have not yet named, but are dear to us in our hearts. May your spirit of comfort, of healing, be with them. Grant your presence with all those who care for those who are ill. Strengthen them in their labor. May they be angels of comfort. For those who are overwhelmed by the work in caring for so many, we thank you for their endurance and for their work and pray that they may be strengthened and comforted, their spirit may be revived, their bodies may be strengthened for the harsh and often unknown work that they do for so many. For those who are in harm's way, for those who are victims of war, for refugees and immigrants, hear our prayers. May those who are forced away from their homes find communities of welcome and help and may you undergird them with strength and resilience as they seek to create a new lives. For those we named and those we have not yet named, for those who are without homes, for those who are away from those who nurture and love them, for those who we walk past and ignore, remind us, O oh God, that they are your children. And that when we walk past one, we walk past you, Jesus. For communities ravaged by the results of climate crises caused by our neglect, we ask that you restore those communities and those individuals. For those ravaged by storms and wildfires and climate crises unimaginable. Bring healing and wholeness and restoration. We ask for your forgiveness for those times we've ignored our neighbor and our world by forgetting to do what you call us to do, to love justice, to love those who are our neighbors, to create a world of healing. We thank you for this community here, O oh God, this morning. Continue to strengthen us as we seek to do, to know and do your will. May your love continue to strengthen us as we unite together in the prayers that your son taught us to say, saying, our creator in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in this time of trial and deliver us from us evil. For your laws is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Lisa, Brandon, and Diana. It was beautiful. And now, children, we'd like you to come forward in your screens, and I will turn it over to Reverend Cecil. So don't go away, and uh, we need to see you. Nylea, too. Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. And today is another day in which we are glad. So um, it's that time of year again, right? And we are starting a new school year. So I'm gonna ask 
you, if you want to, tell me one thing you are happy about the new school year, anything. Nadia, Nola, anything you are excited about the new school year? Well, I actually haven't started school yet. I start this Tuesday. Um, but something I'm going to be happy about, I guess, is being with my friends at school. Yeah. Something I'm excited to do is Community Action Friday. Wow. That sounds exciting. Can you tell us a little about Community Action Friday? I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm sorry, we're off script, but what's Community um, Action well, Friday? Community Action Friday is a thing we do on Friday, and there are rotations of um, different activities that you get to choose from. So you get to choose, you get a form, and you get to choose two activities to do off of the form. And on Friday, you will get your form back, and then you'll see what classes you got, and then you can go to both the classes. Wow, that sounds excellent. Wow, that is so exciting. Gosh, I wish I was back in school. We we have Veronica and we have Des's children there too. Um, do you have any things to share? What's your name? Juno. 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 Like Alaska. Hi. Homer and Juno. Okay, great. <laughs> Welcome, Homer and Juno. And what are you excited about? Um, for school. I'm excited because I, I get I get to see my friends um in person again. Yeah. I'm excited because I have a lot of my friends in my class. And I and I love playing with them. Good, great, excellent, yeah, great. I see, Veronica's ready to talk, right? What are you starting? What are you looking forward to, Veronica? You starting kindergarten? Yeah, on Tuesday. Yeah. Who's your teacher? Mrs. Evans. Mrs. Evans. So you're. Oh. What grade are you in? Are you in kindergarten? Oh, I can't wow. believe it. Kindergarten. Yay. Yes. Exciting. There is so much to be excited. Hey, there's your brother, Keith. You want to say anything, Keith? Thank you. So yeah, this is a new school year and there's so much to be excited about and so much is happening. And you know, one thing that occurred to me is that each of us, um, we're really good at doing some things. So later on, you're going to hear a story in the Bible. And I want you to listen. It's, it's, there's going to be two scenes that are shared. Listen to the first scene, but also listen to the section, second scene that is, is read. Because it talks about someone doing something very, very well. And I think all of us are good at doing some things very well. Here, I'll show you a painting that a friend of mine made um, that they, um, they gave me and they have an art gallery downtown and they have paintings such as this one. And they made this painting. So he's a very good painter and he likes to paint. Some of us, as we heard Brendan and Lisa this morning, 
are very good at music. And we do that very well. This is, remember these? These are hymn books. Someday we'll be able to be in a church again and sing together. Some people are very good at cooking. And some of us make our favorite dish. So whether it is painting or making music or cooking or soccer or algebra, we are all good at something. Or swimming, yeah. There's a swimmer I see. So we are all good at something. And in the story we'll hear today, the reader reminds us that Jesus did something very well. And what Jesus did in this story was that he came across a person who was deaf and they were unable to hear. And Jesus did a miracle, and we all know it's about, you know, different things that Jesus do. But in order to help this person hear again, Jesus took like dirt and mud and what he had and use it to help that person hear again. And that's a reminder, I think, that we are all called to do something good, to do something well. And we can use whatever we have around us to do good things. So whether it is painting or soccer or swimming or singing or playing piano, we are all called to do something well. And this year, as we begin a new school year, remember that you are called and loved by God. And God calls you and love you to be the best you can be and be proud of the gifts you have. So listen to this story in a few moments. And when it get to that part, you'll be able to say, oh, I know what's about to happen. Well, thank you all. And I hope you have a good week and we will we'll talk to you soon.
Larry, are you with us? I thought I had unmuted. I'm sorry. Oh, you're going to have to start over. <laughs> oh, I understand. Thank you, Lisa and Brandon and Diane. And I'm reading from uh, the day's reading is Mark 7, seventh chapter verses 24 through 37, and I'm reading from the Revised Standard Version. And from there he arose and went away to, to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And I'm sorry, I'm going to be butchering some words. And he entered a house and would not have anyone know it, yet he could not be hid. But immediately a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell that down at his feet. Now the woman was a Greek and a Syrophoenician by birth, and she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, let the children first be fed, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs of the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said to her, for this were this saying you may go your way the demon has left your daughter and she went home and found her child lying in bed and the demons demon gone then he returned from the region of tyre and went through the sion through sion to the sea of galilee through the region of the decapolis 
and they brought him a man who was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they brought him to lay his hands upon him and taking him aside from the multitude privately, he put his fingers into his ears and he spat and touched his tongue. And looking up to the heaven, he sighed and said to him, Epitha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, and his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And he charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the dumb speak. That is the end of our reading. Praise, to the, praise be to God. Aren't we blessed? The music was beautiful. And so thank you, Brandon and Diana and Lisa. It was just beautiful. And the pieces you chose are perfect. So uh, the spirit works. But getting back to the sermon, getting to the sermon, Jesus sighed. What better scripture, what better phrase to illustrate what I have been feeling, what many of us have been feeling, maybe all of us are feeling. Jesus sighed. And it wasn't a ah, sigh of love by any means. It was a sigh of weariness. It was a sigh of fatigue, of exhaustion, of frustration. It was a sigh that, that all the weight of the world seemed to be on his shoulders. Jesus sighed. Not wanting to read the newspaper or turn on the news, not wanting to hear another heartbreaking story, just like us, not wanting to hear another story about Afghanistan or the effects of Hurricane Ida on the coastline and residents of, of Louisiana and the floods in the Northeast, not wanting to hear more stories about all those disasters and then the rapidly fading memory of the disasters in Haiti. Jesus sighed, not wanting to be interrupted, not wanting to be held up from doing what he set out to do. And what he set out to do wasn't anything marvelous at all. He entered a house, according to the scripture, and did not want anyone to know he was there. He wanted some rest and relaxation, R and R. He wanted a retreat, and boy, can I feel him. I would love that again. And in the case of the man who was deaf and had a speech impediment, Jesus didn't want to publicly do anything, didn't want to respond to, his, to their pleading to heal him, him and his friends just begging him. And Jesus really didn't want to do it. He wanted time off. He didn't want more people to ask for help. He didn't want a following clamoring for his help. So he took him aside and did it privately and said, shh, don't say anything. Jesus sighed. <laughs> I know, I'm not Jesus. I never pretended to be. I know none of us are Jesus. But are you feeling him? Are you feeling him? Yeah, this part of Jesus, the very human Jesus, we are part like that. We are connected. Are you at the point of only being able to sigh sometimes? Throw your hands up to say, shh, to I want to go away. I want to bury my head in the sand. I want to pull the blankets over my head. Are you hanging on to the veritable cliff by your fingernails, if you have nails like mine, or fingertips if you don't? I certainly feel like that. 
And it's not just me, I know. With COVID in my family and houselessness surrounding us and people in need and mental health and addiction issues and epidemic reality that keep knocking on our doors and, put, and pouring out on us, I tell you, I do more than just sigh, actually. I think some of the folks here heard a word earlier before church, I'll confess that wasn't my normal speech during church. Yeah, I do more than sigh. And yet the Syrophoenician woman didn't care. Didn't care that Jesus was sighing. Didn't care that Jesus wanted to be alone. Didn't care that Jesus needed time out. Didn't care that he had the weight of so much upon him. She did not care. What mattered to her was her daughter. What mattered to her was her daughter being healed so she could be included in their community, not excluded as something evil or different. And she didn't care what would come become of her herself. She risked herself, risked her life to dare to confront a rabbi, to go out and seek him. She, a Gentile woman, a woman not of his faith, dared to go in and say, I need your help. My daughter needs healing. And Jesus, in his frustrated, sighing, weight of the world, wanting to retreat self, did not respond very well. He tried to dismiss her and send her off. He said, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. A very rude response. Now, some people would like to play it down and say, oh, the term that he used was puppies, and puppies is endearing and caring, but I think that's given him an out he doesn't need. He was a man. He was a rabbi. He was also a, a, a product of his context. And she was not part of his community. He didn't want to be bothered, especially by someone who wasn't part of his community. But this woman would not back down. And that's, you know, many of you know, this is my favorite scripture. And that's why. She was unstoppable. She, she was respectful to him, but she would not back down. And she said, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And with that, she opened Jesus. She opened him, opened his eyes and opened his heart, opened his mind to know that his calling wasn't limited to his people only, wasn't limited to only when he felt like it, that he was called to the world. And her daughter was healed. Her daughter was healed. And the man who was deaf and had a speech impediment, his friends would not be put off when Jesus tried to, to send them away or, or, or avoid them. They begged him and they pleaded with him. <clears throat> they begged him. And so he said, okay, shh. took him to the side healed him using the mud that Cecil talked about and the words that he spoke. And he told them to be quiet about it, keep it quiet, because he did not want to open that Pandora's box. And he ordered them, it said the psalmist. I mean, not the psalmist, sorry. Said Mark, the writer, the author. They wanted to preach the good news, and Jesus said, no, don't. But they didn't listen, of course. They wouldn't be stopped because they were filled with such amazement and such good news that they couldn't be silent. They wouldn't even listen to Jesus, the one that did that miracle. With Jesus' words, the woman's daughter was healed. She could re-enter society. 
and not be labeled as evil or different. With Jesus' touch and words, the deaf man with a speech impediment was healed and could be remembered into society. No longer the outcast that he was because of his differences. No longer labeled as evil or sinful. Miracles were done, even though Jesus didn't really want to. He didn't feel up to it, but healing and joy was brought to people who were broken and outcast. Jesus sighed, but he was opened. He was opened by the woman. He was opened by the, peop the, the friends and the man who needed him and pleaded with him. He was opened. Now, I, I have to share something here. As Cecil put it in Bible study, Janine Delaunay, Reverend Janine, opened me, and maybe some of the rest of you, because last year in October, she preached on Disability Sunday, and she reminded us that the miracle stories in the Bible uh, and, and the, the comments about the blind will be made to see, uh, the deaf to hear, uh, and this man being healed, those can be very hurtful or difficult or challenging for people that have disabilities that aren't going to be healed. Cecil said that Reverend Janine opened me because she made me aware and made me think about how to approach the scriptures then, this scripture and all scriptures, because we know that physically not everything can be healed, but everyone can be opened. Everyone, even Jesus, everyone can be opened. So what is this to us? What, why talk about it? What, what's the big deal? Because we're not Jesus, and people cannot always be healed. But sometimes people come to, at, to us like we should be Jesus. We should be able to do stuff. And maybe we're more like him than we usually think we are. The humanity of Jesus in these scriptures is too strong to deny, and we are connected, very much so. And as Jesus got woke by the woman who wouldn't go away, we can be woke too. We can be opened. He was open to the calling to respond to a wider wor world, not just his community, but the Gentile world too. The Syrophoenician woman was a nobody, at no name, who had incredible courage, and she taught him that. But the miracles didn't stop there because we have to believe her community became open open to the healed girl, to see that the girl was no longer what she was before, and perhaps open to Jesus, even though they were Gentiles. And the man who was deaf was open, his ears and his tongue were, his tongue was released, his ears open so he could hear and speak, and his community would be opened to receive him, and perhaps be convinced that he was no longer labeled sinful, or his parents sinful, or what was then thought of when someone had a disability. He was no longer useless, as they may have thought. And the man and his friends, and perhaps that community was open to Jesus, whether he wanted them to be or not. They knew he had power. He was special. The good news was spreading. It was spreading, I'm not going to say like wildfire, because we don't want that, but spreading like crazy. And then the encounter. The encounter Jesus had with people, we have those encounters with us every day. There's something that reminds us of who we are and who we're called to be. Mine came yesterday, probably a few, t actually a few times. I was here working on my sermon. I had a, an agenda. This is what I have to do. I have these things I have to do. Phone calls, a sermon, and then I'm back home. 
And I happened to go outside to put a book in the library at the curb. And I encourage you to use that little library. And then I saw some things on the yard. And then I went in the garden. And there was some, a man there. And then there was another man there. And, and we started talking. And, and even though I had this agenda and I had things to do, I asked them, you know, is there anything I can do for you? And one of them was talking about all he had to do for us, what he would like to do. But uh, there's somebody at the door or outside. <clears throat> we often get people that come in to our lives and to stop us from what we think our agenda has to be, to, to call us up and to know that we have to be open to that. There was a message too on the answering machine, one that I could tell she wasn't calling the right place. And so I almost wanted to just delete it and say, forget it. But this person was seeking help for someone else who was houseless. So I called her up and I said, no, that's not who we are. But we started talking, and I, just, I found out more about why she was calling and what the, the circumstance was. And I was able to give her some leads on where this, the people that needed help could get help. These people need miracles. And I couldn't do the miracles, but I could help. And yes, I'm not Jesus, and I, I can't do what everybody needs all the time, but I am called to be a be woke, to be awakened, to be open, to be receptive, to be open to what is needed and who needs it. The Day Center coming to our church was a ministry that opened us up, opened us up to new needs, new people that, that we could learn from and get from as well as give to and share. And as the, the population of the day center changed, we saw more and more houseless people come, more people struggling with drug addiction and, and mental illness. We, it gave us other reasons to be open and, and to understand what is needed and how can we respond. So we developed the cold weather shelter. We, and then with the, the garden being done, and the garden was for our sake as well as the neighborhoods, and David was very adamant and has the sign out, it's to, for everybody. We also realized, David realized, that, that folk were coming that needed something more. They needed the peacefulness of the garden, but they needed charging stations for their, their devices, their phones. They had nowhere to go to get them. So he made those adjustments. He listened to what was needed. He listened to his Syrophoenician woman. And he responded. And then we decided to, we got some money, thanks be to Elaine um, Bates. We decided to remodel the bathrooms, but not with just for our own use, but for the day center use to include showers that would be easier for them to utilize. And so we have two beautiful showers and two bathrooms down there that are useful to all. And then we decided we needed to renovate our kitchen. And yes, we're coming down to the home stretch. It's almost done, that long, long process. And thanks to David Nichols and Dennis Harris and his work and, and the committee, um, Colleen and Elvira are helping, we're almost there. And that kitchen isn't just for us. That kitchen is also for the day center to give life-giving meals and support. It's also for others who come and need the kitchen, for our shelter, too, to provide hot meals on cold nights. It's responding to the needs of the community, not just our own. Because we are called, like Jesus, to be open, to be opened. 
and none of it is convenient, and none of it is easy, but we are called. And then I get my call from my friend, Brother Modesto, at the border, and he said, Gustavo and his family are desperately in need of housing. They're refugees. They're coming across the border. They're in quarantine, and the place they were to go is in the midst of wildfires. Can you find a spot? And Tom Hebschman, a new person in our congregation, responded. And he has a space that we believe will will be home for Gustavo and his family. It's not always convenient. It might not be what he planned to begin with, but he's responding. He's opened. And the tragedies in Haiti, one after another after another, the call for funds to assist, and maybe it wasn't the right time to ask people for money, but we were opened to the pleas and the needs of people that we might not know, but we know that are there. And the development of low-income housing, the need is so real surrounding us, and we have resources, we have land. And so Judy Petrie is leading the process to, to look at and explore how can we support development of low-income housing here and elsewhere. None of it is easy. None of it is something we invited in, but we are called upon to be open. To be open. And I'd have to say, looking at Lisa over there, she responded, at first hesitant, but we needed singers, and she stepped forward. It wasn't easy, was it? Not at the beginning, but she does it. And Janet and David, they responded, and Diana responded because we needed music and videography and, and all that to help us in worship. And the volunteers who responded to the cold weather shelter and, and the committee that helps uh, run it, organize it, they responded. They were open. We are called. We are called. We are called to be open by the encounters that come at us, to hear God's word and God's calling no matter who we are. And yes, Jesus sighed, but Jesus was open. So you can sigh all you want, but be open. Amen. can hear me or if you're even there I don't know if you will listen to a humble prayer they tell me I am just an outcast I shouldn't speak to you still I see your face and wonder were you once an outcast too? God help the outcast Hungry from birth Show them the mercy They don't find on earth The lost and forgotten to you still God help the outcasts or nobody will I ask for nothing I can get by but I know so many less lies 
Some are blessed, some not And why the few you seem to favor They fear us, flee us Try not to see us God help the outcast, the tattered Don't cast them out The poor and unlucky The weak and the odd I thought we all were The children of God pretty. Thank you, Lisa and Brandon and Diane again. We give thanks to God and to you. Please remember your offerings are still needed. We can arrange giving, through, you can arrange giving through your bank by bill pay or online at www.ainsworthucc.org. Click or on donate or you can mail or drop off your offering at Ainsworth United Church of Christ, 2941 Northeast Ainsworth Street, 97211. <laughs> Join me in the prayer of dedication. We praise you, O God, for all you have blessed us with. Help us open our hands and our hearts to give fully. Guide us to use our resources to be your healing presence in the world. We pray this as disciples of Jesus, the one who sent you 
to show to us the us way. way. Amen. The table is set, all is prepared, and we are called to it virtually across miles, across uh, borders. We have Jessica in Peru and who knows where other people are. We are all called to gather around this table, this table of love. And so I hope that as we gather that you have something to show for your communion something to partake in. Because we remember, as we do communion, we remember when Jesus gathered his friends about him, and they ate together and talked, but then something special happened, and he picked up the bread and he blessed it, and he broke it and he said, take and eat this. Do this in my memory. And at that same time, he lifted up the wine into the and poured it into the cup, and he said, take and drink this, the cup of the new covenant, poured out for all of us. Do this in my memory, too. Please pray with me. O oh, gracious and loving God, we ask your blessing upon the bread, the fruit of the earth, and the wine, the fruit of the vine. And as we partake, may we feel the blessing of the love of Jesus within us and surrounding us, connecting us one to another. And it is in his name we pray. So come, for all things are made ready. I invite you first to take up the bread or whatever you have to eat. Take it and eat the body broken for us, the love shared with us. And now, drink from the cup, the cup of the new covenant. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this holy meal, this meal that reminds us of the depth of your love as you shared with us, Jesus, your son. It reminds us of the love that he shared with the world. It also reminds us that we are called to share that love with whomever we encounter whoever is in need, whoever wants of your love, may we share it with the good news of Jesus. Amen. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God lift up the light of God's countenance upon you giving you peace this day and all the days to come.